Welcome to episode five of Warts and All. Now, you join me at the beautiful Glebe Fishery today. It is oh, it's just beautiful. The, everything's in bloom now. The flowers are coming up. All the leaves are on the trees. It's so green around here. You can hear the birds singing. Just magnificent. What, what a venue. Um, I'm on peg, uh, peg 22 on late one today, which is a really, really nice peg. Peg I've never drawn, but one that I really like the look of. And we've got a few matches coming up here, and I just wanted to have a session where I could look at certain things and show you how I'm going to approach like a, like a practice session with it, thinking about it being a match session. But I know a lot of you guys are pleasure anglers who just want to keep catching fish on a day like today. So I'm going to set up a few different things so we can show you different things. We've got a feeder rod set up, we've got a short pole, a long pole, maybe some margins later on, but we'll play that one by ear. And uh, yeah, but it's simple, it's really simple, and that's what I want to get across today. The fishing's simple, but there's a few things you've got to get right. So. Without further ado, I think we should spin round, get on the box, catch a few fish. Okay, so peg 22 here at the Glee on pool one. Great peg. It's probably 35 metres wide, something like that. I'm just guessing roughly. Um, and this is a great peg to catch on the feeder. So I've set a feeder up because I just feel like it's going to be a good option early in the match or early in the session. Um, and it's a great method here anyway. So I've set a feeder rod, rod up, 11 foot. You want something with a bit of backbone, I've got an aerity, but it doesn't matter. As long as it's got a bit of power, you're not fishing with a method feeder here. The rules dictate that you've got to have a 20 inch hook length below your feeder and using a cage feeder. So, because the rules dictate that, you, a normal feeder doesn't fly as well as a method feeder. It's, it's harder to cast. So, with that in mind, you need an 11 foot rod. That would be doable with a method feeder, a 10 foot rod would be fine here, but with a cage feeder, it's different. Uh, I've got a super simple setup. I've just got one of our smooth hounds on. I've got a couple of different options here as far as feeder sizes go. I've got five hole, four hole, even a six hole there for a bit of baiting up, should I need to do it. Um, all between 20 and 30 grams. So just something that will get me there nice and comfortably. I've just got that running on the line, eight pound main line, nice and simple. I've got a little quick change bead so I can change my clems, tangle free, nice and simple. And then I've got 20 inch hook length, a Vo 22 line, which is nice and robust, nice and strong. And then I've got a size 12 hook on with a band on. I'm probably going to fish a bandum, a bunch of maggots, uh, a hard pellet, something like that on the hook. So the band just allows me to try all those different options. Nice and simple, nice and nice and easy setup. The, the critical part of this is your casting and, your, and how you actually go about fishing it. But we'll, we'll talk about that when we get fishing. Now to start with, there's always some fish to be caught at five meters short here. Short and early and late, you can catch them at five meters. And on a really good day when there's a bit of wind about, you could probably catch there all day, but I'm planning on, on, on starting at five meters. I think in my, in my sort of my match plan, as it were, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put like four or five feeder fulls of ground bait over on the far bank at the start. Say the, say the hooter blows now, I'm putting four or five feeder fulls over there, and then I'm gonna start on my short pole. Um, and that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to put my four or five feeder fulls in um, and then leave it and come on my short pole. Now it's exactly, because it, it, I've measured it here on my top kits because I've these have got like markers on it. It's 54 inches deep. So I don't know what that is in feet and inches, but it's 54 inches deep. Uh, I've got a 4 by 16 Fury, which is just perfect float for this sort of fishing. It's got a two and a half mil tip, nice and thick. You're fishing for proper carp in here, four to 10 pound carp. You need something that you can just, when it goes under, it wants to be as close to being always a bite as possible. So nice and strong, nice and robust. It's just not going to let you down. Uh, I've got a relatively short line above the float. Uh, that's about eight inches, uh, which is important when you're fishing a short pole. You want to be nice. Every time your float goes under, you just want to lift it just a little bit. See if the fish is on, no, drop it back down. So that helps you do that. I've got two back shot above it. You don't need them. It's just something I always do. And, I, and to start with, I've got a small pot on the end of the pole and I've also got the green zip elastic. They fight hard in this venue, they really are fit fish. The green is going to be stretched today, don't you worry about that. And then down at the business end, it's on our uh, 20 main line and then I've just got like a spread bulk of, of number eights at the bottom end, that's all. It could be a bulk and one dropper to be honest with you, but I'll start with that. There might be an odd fish caught on the drop. I'll start with that strung bulk set up, see how it goes. Um, and then I've just got an 017 hook length with a size 16 GPM on there. I won't hesitate to step up to a KK8 hook on this venue. It's a manly venue and you need strong tackle. So that's the short pole line. 
In the middle of the match, or middle of the session, I expect to catch quite a few on the long pole, probably pinging. And the, the rig's almost exactly the same. It's much deeper. It's a full top kit out there, probably six foot. Again, the 4x16 Fury. Again, the green zip. So the same sort of setup on the long pole. I'm going to feed them exactly the same. The only difference is on the long pole. I probably will ping a few pellets in uh, and try and build it with a catapult. But we'll, we'll, we'll worry about that when we get fishing. Initially, I'm going to pop my bait in out there. Um, I've set a little big head up. Um, there's bound to be some muggers at some point. So I've got, I always have a big head set up just in case there's a few muggers about. Um, you never know. We might be, we might be uh, doing a bit of mugging later. It's, it's ever so warm. There could be some, could be some cruisers. But you can see them already. They're out of range at the minute, but you can see an odd one swimming around. And then finally, I've set up an edge rig. I don't know if I'm going to use it. I might. It's very flat at the moment, but it could, it could come into play later in the session. Certainly after sort of two o'clock. So I've picked a spot. This is a lovely edge actually. I've got the best of both worlds on this peg. I've got a shallow one to my right, and I've got a little bush here on my left where it's, I can get precise with you, 34 inches deep next to this bush. And I think for what I want to do, maybe loose feed a bit of corn down there, that could be perfect. So I haven't bothered with the shallow side. I will, in a match, I probably would do. I'd probably feed each side, but today I'm just going to concentrate on that slightly deeper one, feed it with corn, and then uh, and worry about how working it out. I've got a 4x14 Fury, uh, 020 again, a bulk of number eights, and then I've got uh, an 017 hook length again with uh, a size 12 hook on. I'm gonna fish double corn on that. I'm gonna be super accurate, probably throw a little bit of corn in, but mainly pot next to that bush. And I think I'll catch some fish there later on. And that's it really, it's gonna be simple. It's more about timing. This is one of them venues where it's all about, you've got to get your timings right. Like, there's no point fishing in the edge at the start because you can see the fish. There's one there cruising. They're over there cruising. The fish are out in the pond at the minute. So there's point, it's pointless fishing and wasting your bait in there when the fish are out there. So as with all commercials, there's, there's a chance of a short, fish, short pole fish. That's what we're going to start on. I'm going to put that bait in across because I think it's the right thing to do today. But probably give the short pole half an hour. Let the feeder develop once I've put that bait in. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good day. So we'll start on that short pole. We'll get some fish caught, hopefully. And uh, yeah, let's get on it. Let's, let's, let's catch some fish. Okay, so that's in the chat. Very simple bait menu. We'll talk a little bit more detail about the bait soon, but I've got some six mil pellets, uh, just fin perfects. To start with, I've got a bit of ground bait for the feeder and I've got a few two mils and a few four mils mixed together to go in the feeder. And I've just got some bigger hard pellets for the hook and I've got some wafters for the hook for the feeder as well. Very simple. I've got some corn, which I'll probably be bringing to play down the edge, but we'll worry about that in a minute. Uh, we'll worry about that later. There's no point cracking it open yet. It might not be an edge day, so we're going to play it by ear. First thing I want to do, though, for my session, is feed my short pole. So I've got 10 pellets there, that's all. What I like to do, just dip my pot in. I've got a hole in the bottom of my pot. Loads of pots nowadays have got grooves in them and, and slits in them. Brilliant. I've just got a hole in the bottom of that, it just lets the water drain out. Then pellets are gonna break the surface tension, which is so important. And I've plumbed up, still on the slope. It's like at five meters, it's still on the slope before it flattens out. Very important. And then what I'm gonna do, I've lined up a fire bank marker. And I'm just gonna pop my pellets in like that. Now I've also plumbed up at 14 and a half meters. And I'm gonna put some pellets in out there as well. Um, just sneak a few in. I'm not going to put loads in. And I, I'll probably ping an odd one over the top throughout the day. But I'm just going to, just the same, 10 pellets or so. No point going mad. The more pellets you put in, the harder you are to catch on soft bottom. So um, hopefully we'll catch on this if we need it. Hopefully the feeder will just keep going round. We won't even need the long pole. But it's still spring, don't forget. And we need to... So I'm just accurately potting them in. And we still need to be a bit cautious and have a few tricks by our sleeve just in case you know plan A and plan B doesn't work. So the long pole, don't really want to fish that, but it is there if I need to. Really important thing there, what I've done, which you might have noticed, you might not, is I've broken the pole down in several places. Here the fish charge for the far bank and I don't want to be caught short. So I always have a section so I can add them on dead easy. It's so important that is, even with strong tackle, they'll lead with a merry dance in this fishery. So while that, that bait is actually settling, I've got a big feeder here, and I'm going to put four or five feederfuls in, mainly ground bait, 
because I intend to have half an hour on that short pole. Um, just making sure that there's some bait over there. So what I'm going to do, just to get a range finder and put some ground bait in, and then just really lightly nips in. Nice. Power bank, give it a sec. Striker out. That's how I'm going to put five in, I think. Mainly ground bait, just to create a bit of a better bait over there. Not, not worry too much about the how accurate I am. I'm just trying to create an area where I can pull some fish in and get let them get settled. Lovely that. If I can put my feeder there every time, we'll be very happy today. The good thing is with them smooth bounds, they empty dead quick. So we don't have to worry about The feeder not empty and I've got relatively dry ground but I'll say I'm going into more detail about the feeder when I actually fish it but I've got relatively dry ground bit that explodes out and I'm gonna not put my up length on yet because I may need to top it up again if the short pole's good then I'll I'll um I'll try and stay on it as long as I can basically as long as it's going under. Alright so let's start. Now obviously in an ideal world I want to be throwing my bait in but just as a starter for 10 I'm gonna Pot everything just to see if we can keep them nice and calm and nice and on the bottom. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start with six mil in the band, nice and simple, straight out my pot of feed, and I'm, I'm just going to put in like five pellets. Once again, same as before, dip my pot under the surface, just nice. Now, you may look at my elastic and think, why has he got so much dangling out of the puller? I have like an, an extra 10 inches of elastic. You'll see why in a bit. When we get catching some fish, you'll see exactly why I do that, because these fish are mental. I'm just going to sneak them pellets in as I can. Trying to minimise the amount of noise that I'm giving them. Right, now we're set. We're set now. Look at that. Straight away. Now, it doesn't feel like a carp. But it's still a quick bite. I'll move my feet around that little road for now. Could be cruising this. What have we got? Maybe it is a carp, it's a little one. Tench! Hey! Look at that! Park bench! What a lovely little fish. Didn't expect to catch that. Nice little tench. Look at that, that's how quick it can be though. Unbelievable, isn't it? How quick you can get bites even after that initial feed. I'm just going to add in a wrench depth one. Tench. He's smegged on my line. Well, that's a good start, but obviously, we, we really want to catch some carp early. Now, obviously, with hard pellets, fish are very attracted to the noise, and I'd be foolish not to use that. But to start with, I'm just trying to get a feel for the swim, feel for how many fish are here before I get giddy and start throwing pellets in. Because as soon as I start throwing pellets in, we're going to be in a world of pain because it could be the make or break of it. it could, every time you throw in, you could get a clean bite and catch a fish, or you could just foul up everything. So I'm trying to be really cautious to start with. Put that um, little pot full in each go and just sit and wait and see if I get a bite. If, if in fact, three or four minutes, if I haven't had a bite, I will throw two or three pellets over it uh, to, you know, generate a response. But in an ideal world, we'll, get, we'll catch fish off that little pot full of bait. Just a little, little trap is what you're trying to do. It's a nice little trap. I feel like in the early going, once this little flurry of, or you might catch some fish here, you might not, but hopefully I will. Um, once that little initial flurry is over with on the short pole, then I'm thinking that my first two hours will be on the feeder. Um, it's a good feeder peg, this. And I think that I will catch on the feeder here, so I'm hoping to catch me early mugfish on this and then. 
see what happens. Not sure if that's quite right just yet. I don't want to do that. I know I keep saying I don't want to throw any bait in, but it might be that I have to today. So I'm going to just try and. Oh. Ooh, all right. Not what we uh, expected. Nice roach, though. Not really what you're uh, looking for on the hard pellet. Nice fish, though. So it may be that we don't catch an early mud carp today. Could be one of them days where they're not not all fit to be getting with. We'll cross that. It's worth doing just to give me peg, me feeder peg a chance to settle, I think. And like I say, on some days you can drop in on this, catch two or three carp, and end up spending most of your day on it. You notice I've not bothered feeding out there yet. I've not put any baiting out there, uh, other than that initial pot full. The last thing I want to do is start firing pellets on the line that I might not need. Does that make if that makes sense? I don't want to create a load of confusion in my head. Not I, the fish will be everywhere anyway, but in my head I don't want to little bite there. I don't want to potentially rev up a line that I'm not going to need, so I just want to take the first half, first hour or so steady and work, work my way in. So I might not catch one short. Or it may be that I have to be really aggressive. There we go. No, no arguing what that was. You notice I, I, I hooked up into the fish and then threw, threw some bait over the top just to maybe gather another fish in the area ready for the next chuck. Don't get giddy though, just take your time. Very good fish this one for the glebe. Little dark mirror. Nice fish though. And that's obviously a little pellet muncher that's been in the margins overnight or whatever. Nice little fish. You know, he's been hanging around in the margins and not gone out into the lake yet so he was up well up for a bit of uh, pellet action short to check my shot i've got stops on this rig which are fantastic for thick lines but obviously they do move so just every time you catch your fish or ship in just check they're in the right place or you know put them back into where you need them just got some six reels again caught a fish that time so i put eight in and obviously i threw a few in quietly as possible. Now already as I'm fishing I can see a lot of lot of muggers starting to appear and it is cloudy I think we're going to get rain on and off today. I've got a feeling that as soon as the current bun comes out there's going to be muggers everywhere and I think they'll be very reactive to the sun. They've got a bit of spawning on the mind. They're a bit this time of year they're still getting to grips with the new temperatures and stuff. I think they're very reactive to the sun, so in a match I definitely have that mugger set up, a big head that I can flick around at, at these cruising fish. I am, um, yeah. I think that could be really, really good. Because, the, the, you know, a lot of the time the fish that you catch when you do mug are big fish. So you've got, on these venues you've got to, um, you've got to think about that. You see, I'm getting a lot of indications now. Whoa, that's a <laughs> headbang then. That just I had a lot of indications then, and I just left them alone. Oh, off, oh. And then eventually it's just absolutely walloped under. Hopefully you pick that up on the other camera. But this is going perfect. I've had that tench, I've had that little carp, and then this one feels like a bit of a customer, this one. That green zip's like really nice for this sort of fish, isn't it? powerful but it's got enough stretch in it you can just let them cruise out your peg again I fed as soon as I hooked that fish but I'm not gonna I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna try and be um, disciplined in myself it could be very easy to just keep throwing loads of pellets in but I'm just gonna try and take my time with it this session just, oh that's a nice fish nice common now that was a very very quiet fight for the glebe that was Top lip, I felt it as soon as I hooked into him. He'd give it one of them big old head shake. I knew he was in the mouth. Perfect, lovely common that. Six or seven pound, probably. They are quite heavy fish in this venue. 
a lot of people go over the net limit because because of uh, underestimating the fish, shall we say? Let's try that again. Because that was that was textbook. That was. I put that little bit of bait in. Had that little carp they took before, and then sat there, and it's just walloped under. Absolute textbook. So there's no point changing anything at the minute because I've just caught what ten pounds in three chucks there. Ten from two carp. Ten, eleven pounds. So no point changing anything yet. I've got my eyes peeled for these muggers because I do think that could be an option. And obviously that long pole, but I think that once this fades away, then I can get on that feeder and, and get my head down on that feeder. So even though the weights are big, like you need 200 pounds to catch or win on this venue, um, that doesn't, oh, not one. Um, that doesn't mean you're just going to slay them at five metres all day. They're big fish at the end of the day. And it might just be that you've got to pick your moments to be at that, at that distance. Got a small carp, I think. Oh, green's lovely. Another tench. Can't believe it. Another tench. Get in. Glebe tench. It's that same one I caught before. I'm going to give it one more chuck. Now I'm going to give it one more chuck. Let me have a look at my little counter. That's 20 minutes. And I've been fishing that. And we've had two carp and two tench. So a nice little start. I'm, I'm feeling that the fish are pushing out a little bit. So I'm going to actually be a bit more aggressive this time. Put a few more pellets in. Because I'm going to come off it anyway. If it doesn't work, I'm going to come off it. So I don't need to be as cautious now. Let's swing the rig out. We're on a slope here, and what I'm doing is swinging the rig out past and letting it come back in. That's, that's how I like to fish it. Rather than just dump it in a heap, I feel, I feel like that's a nice way to do things. Nice and accurate. And then later on, when we get throwing bait in more regular and building it, then it, it gets a bit more aggressive. I'll take the pot off. I'll be a bit more aggressive, but for now, we're not building this. One. We're just trying to pick out, pick off them fish that are already in the in the margin from the from the day before or the night before. Be by hand just to see if we can generate a response. <coughs> There, so that but again that, that feels like another tent, so I think the carp have pushed out now. Which is fine. We, this is why we've got different methods set up because lost it. That was a tench. But I think that that is fading. Let's just come off that. I think that's fading. So what rather than waste time, what we're gonna do is feed that long pole quickly and then we're going to have a session on the feeder because I think that that's going to be important to our day. So rather than waste time fishing for carp that aren't there at the moment on that five metre line, we'll go to where I think they will be and that feeder should be good. All right. Put your pot leaves in at 14 metres because I just want to keep this going. Should I need it? I might not need it, but I might need it. It's about keeping those plates spinning and uh, Again, nice and accurate. Yeah, it's about keeping those plates spinning on a venue like this. You know, people see the, the, the fact that it's massive weights and all that, but it's not necessarily just crash, 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 bang, crash, wallow. There's a bit more to it than that. So let's get the kit on the feeder. Let's put the hook length on, and uh, I'll join you in a minute when they're all set up and ready to go. So we've had that initial flurry on the pole. We've probably caught 11 or 12 pounds. A couple of tench, a couple of carp, but I was getting less and less carp signs. There's a lot of cruisers about now. Not a lot of cruisers, but there's cruisers. I feel like the fish have pushed away is what I'm trying to say. Um, so it's time to chuck the feeder. Now I've put that bait in initially. Hopefully there'll be some fish there. Now I've gone in with a, a hard pellet, uh, eight mil. I'm gonna just try and build it up to this. Now, what I will say is, you will foul up fish here on the feeder, and it's all about 
minimising it and putting a bit of blinkers on. A bit off the bank that one, but we'll, we'll get into the groove. Let's see if we can't get catching. Now, I'm going to chuck really regular to start with. I'm going to be looking at two minutes maximum. There's fish there. I'm getting liners already. So I've put that bait in initially. It was a poor cast, that was. I'm going to give myself one out of ten for my chuck. It was short and it went in horrible. Um, but it serves purpose. It's getting some bait in. It's getting me used to it. There's liners there. When this venue's, when you get your feeder going on this venue, you chuck it in and it'll go round because you've got that long hook length. It's, um, it goes round as it's falling, if that makes sense. And what, as a general rule, what I like to do, I'll chuck in, put my rod down, I don't sink the line, and I wait for the line to, to sink, and once it's sunk fully, that's my cue to reel in and, and cast again, if that makes sense. I, I believe that that takes about a minute or so, a minute and a half. Um, it's very rare on this venue that you just sit and sit and sit and it'll go round. Obviously it would do eventually, but the whole thing you're trying to do is, is achieve that, chuck it in and it goes round. So I'm thinking now I need to reach up that. So I'll whiz it back in. Let's chuck it out again. Just put ground bait in this time. Let's chuck it harder. Better. Yeah, that will do. That will do. Exactly. I'm leaving my line on the top. I'm not worried about it sinking it or anything like that because when you're fishing a method feeder, obviously you want it don't want to move the feeder and obviously I don't want to move the feeder necessarily with this but it's not as critical as it would be with a method you know it's um it's a little bit more you've got a bit more leeway because of that long hook length so if, if, if my bait if my feeder moves a little bit it's not the end of the world and I can I can build it so I don't mind that the line's on the surface like I say I'm gonna let that sink and then by the time that's sunk, I can I can chuck out again. Now, one thing I will say, it's very flat calm today and it's quite muggy. So it might just be that it's not not even a feeder day that you do get days here when they're a bit funny on the far side. You know, when they want to cruise around, but I think we will catch some fish on this. We might just take a three or four casts just to get it going. Interestingly, I put, I don't put wet micros through. Might be a mistake, but I quite like the fact that everything's dry, my ground weight's as dry, almost as dry as I can get it, so it pushes out of that feeder quick. Because the pellets are dry, they're not getting stuck in there. Funny, funny indicator, there might be a fish on that. Um, yeah, that's what I'm trying to, I like say when it gets going, you chuck in and it'll go round. And I'm trying to make sure that when my feeder hits the water, the bait's coming out. I don't want to drag the bait away from the fire bank. So I believe that having dry pellets and dryish ground bait, I'm giving myself the best chance of the bait coming out where I need it. So that line's sunk. So let's whiz back. Take some punishment in your gear here because you're in and out so much. Pellets in. Is it out there? Better. We're getting there now. So that's it. Chucking in three chucks now. See if we can start catching some fish now. I've got, like I say, I've got a couple of feeder sizes. That six hole one is the one I want to use for baiting up, but they're hungry fish in this lake, and when they feed, you need to feed them. So, although I've gone in with a four hole feeder to start with, just to ease my way in and feel my way in, I'm also mindful that I do need to feed the fish, so I might put the five hole on. Five hole 30 gram, that might be a nice feeder today.
Nice, right, so there's indications happening, but no bites yet. Which is very unusual on this venue. Normally you chuck in and you get tow round. But this is why we do this warts and all, because it just shows you that, you know, in some videos you, you, you just chuck out and you, you see them just reeling in fish. But there's obviously work to be done here. I need to work at this and build it. I can see there's colour coming up on the far bank, so there's obviously some fish about. Maybe we've been so flat and still, maybe it's not it's not ready yet. Little indications. There's a bat. Little indications, but no bites again. I'm just looking around the venue and there's just cruisers everywhere now. Very nice too. Yeah, I'm looking around the venue and I'm thinking, right, we've got cruisers happening. I was going to go then. Lots of cruisers happening at the minute. And it's very flat, so it may just be that I need to do a bit of mugging before they settle down and start feeding. They might not actually be feeding yet. Obviously, we only caught two on the short pole. We only, we only caught two on the short pole. The chucking's tremendous now, by the way. <laughs> Feed is going in exactly where I need it. 25 grams is dead right. I'm just thinking, is it, the fact there's so many cruisers about now, is it, might be that the feeder's no good. And it may be that the fish want to be up on the top. And it doesn't look like the sun's coming out anytime soon, but I think as soon as the sun does come out, they're going to just go, come straight to the top, so I might have to get the old big head out in a minute and see if we can't mug one or two. There's lots of liners there now, though. I would have actually expected one by now on this. Lots of carp about. There's one there. Just if I throw a pellet at that, I bet it'll, it'll turn for it. Yeah, it turns straight. Oh, look at that straight away. So that is incredibly muggable, that fish. Like he's just swirled all over them pellets I've thrown in. In a match, I'd have to be thinking about mugging. Mugging's obviously one of those topics that divides opinion, but in the early part of the match when fish aren't necessarily feeding so well, it can be a very um, important part of Especially a match, you're not so, you know, in a pleasure session, you're probably you're not so fussy about it, but in a match situation, you, know, you need to be catching some fish. So mugging plays a massive part in the early going. Oh, the casting's so good. seen an odd fish really close in again. This, it's funny, it's like you read the situation a certain way and I read it that the fish had pushed out but since I've, it's softened away and you put your pole down and they've started coming close again. This is how fishing is funny, how you've got to react. On these carp venues you've got to react because in my head what I wanted to do today was start short, fish that for half an hour, 
took the feeder, spent three hours on the feeder. Have another little spell. There we go, it didn't take too long, did it? Have a, uh, you know, another little spell on the sharp pole at some point, and then maybe finishing the edge, but honestly, fish a fish, and it's not always as easy as that. Nice through action rod, obviously very important. So it took four chucks to catch one, but we've got one over there. Only a little one though. Bits of fish I was saying. Feeder fish on here do tend to be smaller, but you tend to catch more of them. It's like 30 fish on a feeder will be a lot less than 30 fish on the pole, for example, but I do tend to get more bites on the feeder on this menu, so. There we go. The... Importantly, it's in the mouth, because that is, like I said, that can be a problem on the, this menu, that the, um, you foul up a few. It's a nice start, right in his bottom lip. And he's still four pound, certainly three and a half pound. So it's not, it's not like he's tiny. That is a, probably a classic feeder fish for this venue, really. That sort of stamp. I caught that on a red pellet. So we'll go in with that again. Let's put ground bait in this time. Let's just put a bit of ground bait in. No, venue owner Roy Marlow will be around in a bit. I think he's probably going to give me 8 out of 10 for me casting at the minute. So yeah, so that one took a little bit of time to come. Four or five casts. So I, I think when that happens, like I got a ding ding ding, I think that's a fish that's had the bait in the mouth and spat it out. I think that's not hooked itself, that one. Which is obviously when you've got a long hook length, can happen. Oh, what? <laughs> Pull me rod in, there's nothing on. I feel like we're, suddenly it's changed, we're building now, we've got indications happening. As soon as we chuck in, we're getting indications, so they're obviously coming to the feeder now. Oh. Joe, 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 Joe. That's just beautiful. That was a really good cast, even if I say so myself. Oh. Yeah, that, it was worth a fish, that, because it was right out the rattles. Finn would have been proud of me on that one. Now, you want... I think I mentioned it on the last fish, but you want a reel with some cranking power. And this extremity is perfect for it because it's such a slow reel. By that means it's got such a slow wind, um, slow gearing that I'm just winding that fish. Obviously, it's taking line now, but I'm generally trying to get him to turn his head and reel him in without pumping him so much. Look at that. That's so hard in this venue. If you start pumping them here, have an habit of falling off. Whereas I'm just trying to get them swimming towards me. I've got my drag set just right, so if he wants to run, he can. I'm not pumping, I'm not, not doing anything extravagant. Just trying to get them in nice and smoothly. There we go. See? Another feeder sized fish. Three, three pounder. Lovely fish though. Like a fully scale mirror that one. Right in the bottom lip. Perfect. Now I don't need to change anything in a minute. I do feel like they're coming to the ground bait though, rather than the pellets, so I'm gonna keep plowing the ground bait in at the minute because I feel like that's what they're coming to. For if you're interested, I've got um salted caramel. 
The only reason is because I had half a bag in the back of my van. The, the input, the, the, what ground it is isn't really that important. It's, it's how you mix it. Now I mix it on the dry side. Let's see if we can do another awesome cast. Oh, Joe, 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 Joe. I'm going to give myself 8.5 out of 10 for that chuck. Probably could have got it that much further, tie it to the fire bank if I'd have wanted. <laughs> it's such a perfect day, it's flat calm, no wind. If I can't chuck today, I'm never going to chuck. But that 11 foot rod and the right feeder, that smooth round feeder, it's the, the setup's right for that distance. Right, so already I'm thinking, very still today, it's very flat. I'm going to need something else. I don't think this feed is going to be enough to keep me. If it was a match, I don't think it would be enough to keep me in the, in the running. It's not fast enough. At this moment, I actually think I'd be catching more on a long pole than I would on this, as it is at the moment, because it's so calm. I might change in a bit if we get a bit of wind on, fish start feeding a bit more aggressive. Oh, yeah. Right, so that is classic what's just happened there. It's classic for this venue. I foul up to fish then, where my me, me line's gone over its back. You kind of just got to put the blinkers on with that. It does happen here and there's not a lot you can do about it. You just got to, it'd be easy to get frustrated with it because it happens a lot. You've kind of just got to put the blinkers on. And, and go again. Comes off, don't worry about it. Go again. That's exactly what we're trying to do here. Because you'll get another chance. There's, you know, there's a lot of fish in this lake, you're going to get another chance. So if, it, if you do foul up one, it comes off. Don't fray. It could happen five times in a row here. That's how it goes. all about work, you know, working it out on the day. Now I feel it's really weird what's happening here. fish feeding on this feeder line. I don't think it's got good yet, but I, I also don't know if it's just a time of day thing. It's not even 11 o'clock yet. You know, most matches wouldn't just, you know, they start at half 10. I'd still be, in, I've started early obviously because I'm filming, but it may just be that I'm trying to catch fish when they're not feeding yet. And it may be that the feeder will come good. Obviously, it's all going through my head at the minute about what to do for the best. And this keeps showing signs that it's gonna, gonna get good. You see what I'm doing there? I'm just literally reeling the fish in. I'm not pumping. I've just got the rod balanced across my knee. I'm just winding him in, essentially. Until he's close enough to, to net him. So what we're doing, we're just See, I've wound him in, and then he's starting to do a bit under my rod tip, but that's, that's exactly what you want. Nice fish, actually. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna probably net this fish and then um, just get my head down on this another 20 minutes off camera. We'll come back. I am actually gonna start pinging an odd pellet on that long pole, actually, because I feel like I'm gonna need that line. So. I don't want to leave myself short by not feeding it properly, so because I'm going to leave, look to maybe give it a go in 20 minutes time, I'm going to start pinging. Um, I think that's work, you know, going to be, oh, a lovely ghost here. Look at him. All wrapped up. Oh, yeah. What a lovely fish. Eight pound ghost here. Right in the top lip. But yeah, the feeder, like I say, it's showing signs that it could come good, but I do feel like if this was a match, I would be thinking I do need that long pole. Let's have a little look at him. Put us down there. 
Lovely ghost there. Look at him. Lovely and lean. What a lovely fish. Popping back. Yes, yeah, so I'm thinking I'm going to need that long pole as well as this feeder. So I'm going to quickly get a catty out of my bag. Should have that already, shouldn't I? Bad angling. Uh, I'm going to get that out of the bag and then I'm going to work at that long pole maybe. The next time you see me, I could be on the long pole. So we'll find out. We'll have a, we'll have a go and, uh, and see what happens. Right, so the last time you seen me, I was on the feeder. And to be fair, that's been nice and steady over there. I've probably caught eight or nine carp on it. Um, it's not happening as quickly as I probably like, but maybe I'm expecting too much, I'm not sure. Um, but as I ended that last clip, I started feeding like a, that long pole, just pinging an odd pellet. And already I'm getting a, f getting a few blows on it. So let's whiz out there. Again, I've got a 4 by 16 Cyprion. Now I'm not going to pot any bait in to start with. I'm just going to ping an odd pellet over the top. I'm not going to um, cab pot to start with. But I know from information that I've had from like Sam Collett, that cab potting is actually really good here, even though you're trying to catch them in six foot of water, it can be really good. Uh, sometimes it's not that responsive to noise in this venue, but we'll see. To start with, I'm going to just ping like two pellets. Nice and accurate. Just Hopefully, this side of the pole tip, but, um, you know, we're just trying to be as accurate as we can, as Finn always says, try and hit the float. That's an indication straight away. Now, I've got most of my bristle on show, and that's for a reason. I don't, don't want to strike at lines if I can help it. Trying to um, wait for a full-blooded bite, because obviously with, with pinging, you do foul up a few fish, you miss a few bites. So, at least with a full bristle out, I can hopefully read the difference between the, the different bites. Now, all, you see me do it, I fed it twice with the big pot, so 10 pellets at a time, twice. And then I've just been pinging two pellets every five minutes for the last 20 minutes, so there's, at the very moment, no more than 50 pellets on the bottom. Probably 40 pellets on the bottom. And yet they're digging it out. I can see the, the root in the bottom up. So it's obviously really squidgy out there and soft. And not necessarily easy to catch fish on. So I'm just keeping an eye on it. If, it get, if I get loads of bubbles and can't catch them, I've got a feeling I might need a different bait. By that I mean not a six mil hard pellet on the hook. I might, a, I've got a little bit of carp there right on the top. I'd definitely mug him. Oh, he's eating me float. <laughs> Um, it may be that I have to fish something a bit more positive on the bottom. If it was warmer, I'd fish paste, but... Look at that, there we go. No, it wasn't too bad. It didn't take too long to get, to get a bite, even though there's obviously a bit of squidge going around out there. It didn't take too long. You see, look, I've obviously hooked that fish, he's flanked as I've hooked him, and he's disturbed the bottom. There's a bit of squidge out there, but that one didn't take too, too long to catch. Charging off down the lake as they do here. You may be wondering why I'm using regular viewers of mine on my YouTube. Would be like, why has he got a carp pole and not an X70? Well, it's not the X70 isn't strong enough for this fishing, but I do. I must admit, it's one of the venues where a carp pole is uh, quite nice to have for that extra robustness. It's mainly when you're adding sections on, when you're chasing fish out, like when you're fishing short and you've got to quickly add sections on, having that bit more power in the pole, it's quite nice. There we go, it's in the mouth, so that's good. So that was good, good for good first chuck on the uh, pinging line. So it's not, um, that wasn't too bad. If I can catch them like that, I'll be more than happy. Every five minutes or so. Jumping out. I've got that green zip on again. Seems about the right elastic for this venue. Nice fish as well. Much bigger than the feeder fish. Noticeable. So I'm always keeping an eye on that. Because that feeder, they tend to be smaller on the feeder. Look at that right in the top lip, perfect. Nice fish, five pound. So I think this could set the tone for the day actually. As in, a few on the long pole, a few on the feeder. 
and some shortfish light on it might be that kind of day where you've just got to keep picking, picking them off rather than you know settling on one spot for the full day. Yeah, it might just be that I have to sniff about a bit today and move and that could be quite good today. Again. Nothing, two pellets, but you've got to be really careful. Ooh, of course, you can't slap on this venue, but slapping would be amazing. <laughs> so I'm just being really, as I, as I was short, careful with my feed. I'm just putting two pellets in, two pellets, twice, two pellets twice, and then letting it sit. It floats beautiful, sat out like a beacon. Because the temptation is, because every time you feed you'll get an indication, the temptation is to just keep feeding, but obviously you could end up in a whole world of pain, so. It's worth, um, four. Two more pellets. Now, if it gets to a point where I'm not just not getting any bites clean, I've got a little trick up my sleeve, what my good mate Adam Richards told me about. So, if I have to result to that, I'll tell you. But it might work really well. Yeah, that was, I felt like that should have been on then. A load of fizzing. Fortunately, this is a bit of the nature of the beast with pinging. You do get a lot of indications. It's all about being cagey with your bait. Or you can go the other way and pile a bait in and create a bit of chaos in your peg. That, that can actually work. Okay, I'm getting indications, you see, from fish eye in the water there. Which might... off the bottom then. Might not have been mate, you never know. Oh. Don't foul up when I hooked him. Might not be. Must be a big wallaby one. I think it is a big wallaby one actually. Massive, but a nice fish all the same. Yeah, it's in the mouth. It's in the mouth. That's good. Wasn't too bad, a few missed bites, but... That top lip. Four pounder. In an ideal world, you don't get all the missed bites, but I think, unfortunately, is the nature of the beast with the old pinging. I'm just going to change my shot in there, that all spread out, I've just gone for a bulk and one now. I've got an 8 inch hook length, I'm just going to try that. Allow me to just lift and get it in position a bit easier, perhaps. I think 
think if uh, so if we did a 4 by 8 in Fury, I'd probably have that on. Two, so two lots of two, so four pellets, that's all. And then let's wait for a bite. It's not a mess out there yet. It could, when it turns into a mess and there's bubbles everywhere, that's when you might have to change, go down the other route, but as long as I can keep it under control like this, it might be all right. Also be times when I can catch in my feed shallow as well. I've got that big head set up, primarily for mugging, but if that happens a lot more, I will happily just sit out there and hang a pellet out there. If it's ob you know, if it becomes obvious that they're coming in shallow, then you've got a fish. Obviously, you've got a fish from there. That's a nice bite. Full polling. Very nice. That three been not very long, actually. Very positive bite, but it doesn't mean it's. Oh, it's a nice little cat. Oh, no. <laughs> that was a nearly a disaster. Crisis averted. Little buddy cat. That's a bit. A two to three pounder. Lovely fish. As you can see, the fishing is amazing at this venue. It really is good. It's just about working out how best to do it. So I'll just give it one more go. And then just for my sake, I'm going to try what Adam told me. Let's see if it's any better. I can see straight away how this is the pattern that this is going to form. Get a few indications. Um, yeah, get a few indications and then miss a couple and then catch a fish. So it's nice. But there may be that I can make it a bit easier or cleaner with a different approach. prepared to chuck this one more and then I'm gonna actually because I'm interested I want to perhaps try my alternative approach to fishing on the bottom in deep water and see if that works this is good to be fair not this at the moment very nice. But for the sake of the video and the sake of my, um, you know, wanting to catch and learn something, I'll try that, that other approach. But that pinging, to be fair, is really good. Keeping it really frugal with a bait. Everyone thinks you've got to feed loads of bait car, but you just don't. Plastic's awesome. First time I've had a proper go on the green. Lovely. Nice. Right, so what I'm going to do, I could just keep shelling, catching them. And they are very, very nice fit. Look at that. The fully scale mirror, that one. Look at that one. Beauty. But rather than just keep boring you with the same stuff. I'm going to switch things up and try a slightly different approach on that long pole because I'm happy with that. I think that that, you know, in a match or on your session, that pingy pellets works on loads of venues. So what I'll do, I'll switch things up, change things, and then I'll come back to you uh, and explain to you what it is. We've caught and fish pinging. We've caught a fish on the feeder. We've caught a fish on the short pole. And then there's something I really wanted to try. Something Adam Richards told me about the other day about feeding loads of pellets and then fishing a full worm on the bottom over the top. It worked for him in a recent Fishermania qualifier and he says, you know, it might might pay to give that a try. Um, 
you know you gather lots of fish because you're feeding aggressive and um and and then they can pick the worm out on the bottom and i tried it and i caught a tench um and i did actually catch a little carp but i don't know it didn't feel as good as me uh just my normal pinion pellets was however what it has done is drawn some fish in shallow so what's happened is i've just picked the big head up off camera gone on the big head and I've caught one like eight pounds straight away which is much bigger than the fish that I've been catching on the bottom and it wasn't quick or anything but what I, what I did I just kept, just kept swinging my pole uh, rig past my pole tip give it a few seconds bring it past my you're not allowed to slap it if you're allowed to slap it it'd be, it'd be uh, yeah good night nurse but because you can't what I'm doing is just swinging out past my pole. Not a massive long rig or anything, but just enough just to get it away from my pole tip. So there's two things. First of all, it's going past my bait, which is obviously effective in its own right. But it also keeps me a tight line. So when I get a bite, I'm swinging it past my pellets. And when I get a bite, I'm direct onto it. And like I said, I've just had a real good fish for the day, like a, an eight pounder. I'm getting giddy not to feed too often because I still maybe need to catch on the bottom and I don't want to absolutely blow it to pieces so I'm feeling regular like 10 pellets relatively regular but it seems to me that they're hearing the noise and then coming to investigate like not straight away they're not coming in the pellets or anything it's like the noise goes the ripples and everything go and then all of a sudden a carp will come through there's one there at the back now just out of reach and he's just over there look. See if I get him. So he, he came through my pellets, that one. Nice. No joy. So the technique is just to like lift your heel on your box and then drop it and it'll just sort of swing your pendulum your float out and you want all your shot underneath your float. So I've got like it's a four by twelve big head, so four number nines right under my float, something like that. And then I've got like 15 inches below. Strong kit again, 020 to 018. There's a cart there, right in me. And then what, what I'm trying to do is pick them off. Now, it may be that it seems slow because you're not getting those aligners like you are on the bottom, but it can be a really efficient way of catching this scan. Obviously, when you're on the bottom, you foul, look an odd one, you're missing bites and stuff, whereas with this, Generally, when the float goes on, other than the odd silver, it's a proper fish. So it's worth sticking at him. Oh, look, there's one there now. So they're coming like that then. Came into the pellets like a little bit after. Oh, I missed him. Might have been a silverfish though. It's all I'm saying, used to slap in that. Desperate to slap me float, but obviously you can't. Maybe the longer rig would be even better. With a heavy, like a heavier float, maybe? 4x14, perhaps? And that would probably, you know, give me a bit more scope to swing at fish as well. It's really effective, this is. Especially in the middle of the match when they're not feeding as well. Joe, line went tight and everything. There we go. Don't take too long. Pull the pole out of my hands, that one. That's a nice way to fish, I think, today. This is what I mean about having, you need a few bit different bits set up because you could come here today and just think, right, I'm having a day fishing five metres. But because it's so flat and still, those fish are just just gone out whereas because I've got a, a feeder up I've got a long pole rig up I've got a shallow rig up like this I can I can move between them and because the fish are so big you can keep in touch it's funny you can fish this place in one or two ways you can pick your pick your weapon your feeder or your edge or whatever and, and like right I'm an edge man today if you're like me and you're a busy angler, you can do well here, just like 
moving about and rotating a bit and that's another nice fish. And the sun's coming out now. So the fish are gonna come up again. That's another nice fish on the big head. So it feels, when you're out there swinging, it feels like it's taking you forever to get one, but you're not. You're actually having, a, you know, it's, it's actually quite an efficient process. And then there'll be times when you go out and you get one straight away, and there'll be times when you don't get one at all. So it's just got to sort of keep at it. I'm going to catch another one on that. And I think we're doing quite well. We've um, covered a few bits there. Obviously, I've got that feeder to fall back on. I've not fed that for a little while because I, I actually think the pole is the method today because of the, how the weather is. It's flat and still. I think the pole's going to be the answer. I do expect some fish in the edge, actually. We'll look at that as well today. Oh, and uh, we've also got the five metre line, which will come strong today. I know it will. But not at the moment. Not seen a carp come this side of the pole for ages, as I mean like 10 metres or whatever. I'm just not seeing any, so pointless feeding five metres at the moment because it's obvious to me that the carp aren't there. They're out in the lake at the moment. One there past my pole, so it's been getting to come this way. Probably should have a 16 metre section up so I can get to them. Feeding them six more pellets. Sort of day casters would be really good. It's bizarre how they, what they, what's happening because every time I feed, I don't. Oh, there we go. So that's nice fishing, that is. That is nice fishing. That is nice fishing. Just swinging out past. Really good. And because I'm keeping that tight line, because I'm swinging out past, it's the last two have up the cells, which is even better. Whoa. That lovely green. It's like the perfect elastic for this venue. Gary the Ghosty on the green. Triple G. Right, so I think that, that big head, swinging out past the pole, is a really good method. Heaven's about to open, so I'm going to end that segment with this fish because I don't want to get the camera kit all wet. Look at that. I think like that's a, definitely a, you know, on a day like today, when it's muggy and still, it's a very, 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 very viable method indeed. Let's have a little look at him. Come on, boy. Lovely. A little bit of a cricket bat, but nice fish all the same. Four pound. Slipping back. And then we'll have a look at probably some short pole fishing in a bit, maybe, the edge. But yeah, that, that's nice, that is, that shallow fishing. Really, really nice. Right, so we've had a fantastic session. We've caught those fish on the, we caught those fish short early, we've caught some on the feeder, we've caught some on the long pole, we've had a couple shallow. In the end, that worm, actually, what I got suggested, was really good, but it's that time of day now, two o'clock, where we've got to start thinking about a big finish, a crescendo, if you will. So I'm going to feed me five metre again. Notice I haven't fed it during the match or during the session or anything like that. I'm purely doing this when the time is right. I'm not throwing bait in all day. So 10 pellets, just as we did before. Bit of noise to attract them in. And I'm also going to feed me margin. So just got some micros. I'm just going to put micros in to start with. See what we can attract. Um, like I say, and this nice little bush here, it looks really good. So again, a bit of noise, pop them in there, spot on. So 
just as before, I'm going to feed it with a pot, but I'm going to be much more aggressive now. I'm, I'm thinking I want a big finish now. The fish, the wind's come up, everything's changed. The wind's come up, the sun's gone in. We're at a time of day now when they want to feed, so. And I'm an angler who likes to feed them. But while I'm obviously trying to catch me fish for me grand finale, I'm going to just touch you a little bit at that round session's gone. Okay, a bit of tone as well. Um, and what I think I could do differently. Right, so doing things different, it's hard because I've caught loads of fish today. I actually don't think it's it's not been a feeder day today. One one little bit. I've caught on the feeder, but it's not been the it's not been the best way to catch today. In a match. It, I think it would have been an out and out pole day. Um, there's been enough pole uh, fish on the pole lines, be that on the bottom long, shallow, five meters, and then hopefully in the edge, we'll catch them in the edge. Um, but yeah, it's all been about that pole for me today. If I was to fish now while the wind's up, I, I think you could have a really good session on the feeder, but most of the day it's been flat calm. And I just don't think them conditions suit the feeder. Whereas now, when you've got a nice bit of wind on, it really does. So, you've got to just bear these things in mind. Throw some pellets in. I had a little indication. I'm just feeding them six mils. I, I love them like six, that sort of proper six mil, big six mil. I love them. Another, another month, I'd, I'd, feed, I'd happily feed eight mils there. Fish love that. So I'm being much more aggressive now because it's the time of day thing. I'm expecting the fish to come here strong. Obviously I just, like I said, I've not been building this or prepping it. I'm, uh, I'm purely relying on my timings to catch the fish. I'm purely relying on my timings. I'm, I'm waiting for the right moment to feed my lines rather than throwing bait in for no reason. We're busy full doing that. It was a good fish. On the clunk. Now while he's doing his thing, put some more pellets in. It was a good fish this and often when you catch them late on this short pole or in the edge they are proper fish as well. Now I'm going to fish worm over my pellets in the edge, I've just fed my throat. I'm going to fish worms because worms is good out there so why not use it in the edge. Could use corn, double corn, a bunch of maggots would be good but I'm going to go with a big up bait, nice big fat worm, I think that'll be good. Because, like I say, it's working out there, so why won't it work here? Seems like a good theory to me. Feels like a real good fish, this one. I'm going to get him in, and then we're going to look at that edge, I think, because there's no time like the present. But I would expect, if I just kept fishing this five metre line, I'd have a really good, strong finish on this. And I, even though I'm going to fish in the edge, I'm going to keep feeding it. Oh, he's a big lad. Look at that one. Proper fish. Now that's why you've got to come in short late on because fish like that start feeding. And they're the ones that make the difference to your match weights. Look at that, right in scissors, perfect hook. Oh, it's never coming off in a million years. That is, needs a disgorger. That's the reason, you know, we've caught them fish on the feeder, which are like three pounders. Nice fish on the long pole to be fair and shallow. But when they come in the edge and short and they look like that, that is how you do your big weights. Look at that. Eight pound of anyone's money. So I'm gonna. I've got to go in the edge. I'm, I'm, I've got to do it. I've got to do it. So let's get in the edge. See if you can't catch one. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll head down there now and show you how we're gonna do it. Let's get down there. Now, as this is warts and all, 
and we're on full transparency mode. I've just gone down there with worm on and I've just got absolutely mullered with um, perch. So I just tried it off camera and it's not, we don't want perch. So I'm going back in with corn. I've just been in Ponce de Tin of Corn and open that up. Let's see if we can catch that session ending carp with a bit of kernel on. It should be a bit more small fish proof than a gret worm. Now, interestingly, where I'm fishing is. Oh, that looks a bit more carpy. That looks a bit more serious then. Yeah, where I'm, where I'm actually fishing there is. It's not three foot, but it's just under. Sort of two and, two and a half foot. And there. Uh, maybe one of them days where you could catch them in 18 inches here today, but. I think this is a nice step to try and catch them in for now. It's been a great session. It's always you always get a great session here at the Glebe. It's phenomenal fishing. Really is good. I'm going to take a, just a bit of feeding just to get these this edge going. You know, we've fed it and we've pretty much followed it in like ten minutes later, it's not. That's what I like to do. I don't like to um, feed it and feed it and feed it and then try it. I like to feed it and then then fish it pretty much straight away. I don't like to let bait accumulate on the bottom. I think it's asking for problems, that. There we go. It took too long, didn't it? A big fish though. So we might have to go again, boys and girls. It's a little one. So we might have to go again. It's alright, you don't mind that. It's carp all the same. Great bite. Just hopefully you saw that on the camera. It absolutely flew under that bit. Nice. Should we have another one? Yeah, come on. Let's try and catch another one. Lovely fish. It's not an edge dweller though, is it? It's not, it's not one to say they're the ones that you need. I can all these fishing videos, it's not one of them, but it's a nice fish all the same. Let's see. I've got a medium cap put on there. And I've got to be honest, I, I wouldn't even hesitate in using a, a big, the, the large one or a, you know, a big guru or whatever you want to use, whatever pots you, you know, you, you're using. Because at this time of day, they want to feed and, and feed they will. Let's get back in. So you know, caught that card, it wasn't a big and that's not cleared the peg out, so. We'll, uh, pop that in. I've got double corn on now, so we're trying to catch that big one that we were after. I can hear fish getting caught around the lake now, so that just tells you what. That it's fish, you know, fish o'clock, as, as you'd say. It's quite tricky this, because the wind's blowing, the tow is actually moving the float along the bank. So it's coming back to what under my pole, which is a bit awkward actually. I've got that double corn on, so anchoring it in position, and we're just hoping for that absolute berry. Oh, there's one down there. Just got to be patient. We don't want to foul up one. We want to get that fish it clean in the mouth to finish this lovely little video off. Hopefully, it's been enjoyable. Oh, Joe, what are you doing? What am I thinking? Got giddy, didn't I? Struck at what I knew wasn't a bite. 
I couldn't help myself. That reed's annoying. I hope. Brilliant. It's going again then, are they? Can't go out on an edge bream. So obviously this this line is funny, it can obviously make or break it, but we you know we've just come off that five metre line where you know we've caught an eight pound carp and then we've gone down here and we've caught a little scraggy carp really and um and a bream and while they're great weight builders I quite like that eight pounds that I caught out there to be honest. What I'm saying is obviously we all want to fish in the edge but sometimes that five metre is the better line of the two. You've got to work that out on the day obviously. <coughs> It's not like I'm asking them to go in really shallow water there, but maybe the maybe they aren't quite there yet. Flying bream this time. Flying bream. You can. The funny thing is on this venue, you can actually catch a lot of bream in the edge and skimmers. It is a venue where they do like to feed in the edge of skimmers, so. You know, fishing maggots and ground bait in the edge here can be really effective for them. We'll try one more time. If we catch a skimmer, so be it. Up pot up. It might be that I need to big pot it. Got to work it out, it won't take, take long. I don't like how that floats in because of the toe, so I need to flick it up wind just like I was doing short. Let it toe into position and then give it some slack, seems to be the best bet. And I tell you what, I don't know about you, but that looks like serious rain to me, that. So I might have to call it quits anyway, <laughs> even if I don't catch a carp. Uh, this is it, this is my last chuck, and if I catch a bream, so be it. Hopefully we'll catch a carp. Just let that settle, and I'm relaxing the pole back towards me, so I'm giving the rig a bit of slack. Let's see. So, in the match, I, I, I would actually be thinking I've got my timings wrong here, because... You know, them other fit... Once some carp are in there, you don't catch them perch and bream and... Little carp, you catch big ones, and maybe I've got my timing wrong on this. I feel like I've been dead right at all my other spots. I think I've got relatively good, but this one I maybe misjudged this one. I maybe should have finished on at five meters, but there you go, you live and learn. I felt like with the wind cover and the extra depth down there, I might get a big finale in the edge. Oh, no, skimmers. Oh, flying one at that. There you go on. But I'm just looking at that rain and I can feel it. I'm going to have to call that a day. There you go. Another skimmer to end on. We've had a brilliant day here at the Glebe, so thank you everyone for watching and thanks for the Glebe for letting us come and film. It's been really, really enjoyable. It's um, in summary. All methods have worked, apart from the edge, the edge was a bit of an anti-climax. I'm sure if I could fish on into the rain, I would catch them down there. But, you know, it's been one of those uh, really enjoyable days where you've had to work at it to keep those fish coming. So, thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the New Fish YouTube channel because there's loads of videos coming. There's loads of videos coming over the next few years. We're going to be on it. So, subscribe everyone. What are you waiting for? It's free. See you later.